Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 318. Uh, each week we meet here to answer the questions asked on uh, for at least a week more uh, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions um, um, Google Plus group and also on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have David Rosam. Uh, David is an internet marketer. <coughs> He's based in West Sussex in the sunny south of the UK. Well, he convinces himself that it's a sunny south. And um, it's the south. It's sun sometimes sunny. You can find David at davidrosam.com. Micah Fisher Kirshner is uh, head of SEO for Turn River Capital in the USA. Uh, Micah lives not far from Silicon Valley on the west coast of the USA. And Tim Kappa uh, is uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. Um, he uh, is a local search expert and a uh, um, Google product expert in the Google My Business community. All right, we've got 12 questions tonight. Um, the first one is from Gaurav Nayal. Um, he said, I saw the same content on a Quora answer and also on a website. Um, and both are listed on the first or second page of Google. Why hasn't Google penalized one of them? So it's not that, uh, yeah, I mean, Google doesn't necessarily really penalize. It just sometimes has a difficulty in determining what the um, source original source can be. But even then, it depends on the query. So uh, Michael Martinez noted here, um, if the result is such that there's not enough distinct documents, then it may result in showing both. Um, it may also be that the Quora side has more content on top of just the exact content that you're looking at. Um, and so it might have they might not be the original source, but it has more, and so it's going to list both of them in the results. Um, and on top of that, uh, just a single page of duplication is not usually sufficient to warrant a massive kind of penalty. Um, that's a yeah, little bit much in a lot of ways. And then, so those are things to kind of consider when it comes to that situation. Um, and just in general, going back, like they don't really penalize for duplicate content. Thank you, Micah. Yeah, I'd also add, just think of it more as a filter. This penalized sort of thing is, is I think, the kind of wrong word. Um, the, I, I think of it as a filter. So if you've got, you know, 10 or 20 sites with the exact same content. And, and even if that content's duplicated multiple times across those sites, let's say via tags and different categories. So in, 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 you know, in, <clears throat> there may be hundreds of that exact same article. Um, Google, you know, there's no point for them to publish it all. You know, they pick, the one or two and the others maybe added something new to it or they, uh, you know, they took one that was the, the, the higher authority kind of sort of domain, more trustworthy, for instance, and said, right, you know, these are all the same. This is the one that we're going to show show users because all the rest is exactly the same. So uh, think of it, I think of it as more of a filter rather than a penalty. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, we'll call that uh, an excellent answer for Gaurav Nayal, and we'll go to the next one from uh, Michaelis APK. Um, he said, hi, everyone. I want to 410 a few thousand, around 8,000 old articles from our WordPress blog. 
um, the uh, articles have had uh, um, no visits in the last two years, no backlinks and no internal links. I discovered a plugin called 410 for Word WordPress, which I was thinking to install. Have any of you used that before? Would it harm SEO? Also, what would be the best way to remove these 8,000 articles? I haven't done this before, so I'm a bit skeptical if I need to start removing a few of them uh, first or all of them at once. Any ideas would be much appreciated. Thank you all in advance. I mean, I haven't used that specific plugin, but um, I mean, 410 in it is a faster way to get rid of the pages versus the 404s. Um, <clears throat> so, 410 itself, generally, you know, it's not a problem if you need to get rid of these pages and not value. If you feel they are not valuable anymore and they're old, they don't get any traffic, um, then yes, just go go get rid of them. Um, yeah, and and there shouldn't be a problem, but um, I'm just not familiar with the plugin to be able to say uh, what what are what's the potential downside with with that plugin adding that plugin into your site. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? I'd just like to say that the dog has just eaten my shoe. That's what dogs do. That's their job, uh, David. Um, look, I'd just like to point out um, to Mel uh, O'Tong, uh, who had a, um, a, a minor disagreement with uh, Michael Martinez uh, on this, that it's been my experience that um, um, Google pays absolutely no attention to a 410. Um, and 410 or 404, right? Google will still keep coming back. Um, and um, really, if you're going to delete something, just delete it. And uh, anyway, in my experience, I suppose uh, you guys will disagree with me. Maybe not. It, well, it, it, it's it's not that they don't they'll keep it. 410s are a much more permanent version of getting rid of your pages. Um, they may still come back to the potential backlinks or just double check on a few things. Yeah. But it's a lot faster than a 404. The, um, I think the whole thing with this was I'm sure somewhere in there he had said there are literally no fucking links to any of these 8,000 pages. So therefore, the 410 or the 404 literally wouldn't make a difference because in that sense, you know, ultimately Google's going to find them. And regardless, even if it's 404 to 410, it's still going to take quite a while to find them because it's still, there's no links to these um, whatsoever. Uh, it's, you know, and because there's no links, even if it's 404, they're not going to keep coming back to this as such because there's no links. They might come back at some point, you know, uh, and just double check and say, yeah, that is totally gone. But yeah, like Mike said, 410 would be faster. But in this instance, there's literally no difference um, because there are no links to these sites. It, it, you know, they're not going to keep finding them in, in, in that sense. So I took it as kind of more no external backlinks than I, than I thought of it as internal backlinks. Ah. Uh. So uh, that that's something because if if it, the reason for that that conceptual difference is if you really just want to get stuff removed and do it right away, um, if there's a template, just go into Google. I know it's not always the with thousands, it might not be the easiest, but if there's a template, you could basically go in the search console and tell Google to get to remove those pages, and those will get out of the <clears throat> excuse me, those will get out of the index really fast that way, um, and set it up kind of a four, 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 four tens. So I was just assuming that they had internal links still going to them. Yeah, but even if if they they t take out um, the navigation um, so that they'd have no links going to these pages, 
there is still one place they're still linked from, and that's the Google indexes. Google crawls its own indexes for various reasons. Um, they will be found. Um, okay. Let's call that one an answer. Does everybody agree? Yep. Okay. This one from Zawa Kamal. It's on citation. It's titled Citations for Multiple Locations Without Getting Duplicates. Uh, Zawa said or asked, what things should be considered for using multiple locations? I, I'm using uh, WordPress with Yoast. Can I use one service page for both locations? Also, how to do the citations for multiple locations without getting duplicates? For Google My Business, I think it's location grouping. What about others? Okay, so I, I did want to clarify a few things here because the way he's saying a few things didn't quite make sense. So if you've got multiple locations, then you know it's it's the same business. You've got multiple locations, and you've got um, a, 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 an actual physical location within those areas. Then you create, and it makes sense to your users also. But you create um, location pages uh, where you list uh, the locations. Now, depending on the size of it, I mean, like literally, if you've only got ten locations in a particular state or city or wherever then you just have the, the 10 locations, you know, each one has its own page. Um, if this is a multi-national group, then it would make sense to split them up by states or cities and then have the individual shops located within the, those, right? Because you've got a location and on the location, you would have, you know, on the page, you would just have an introduction to that. Um, possibly, uh, you know, you would have, the, the name and the address and the telephone number for that location for that shop um, and you would have you know any other particular information like I don't know maybe you don't serve a particular product there that you do in other states or uh, you know anything's different maybe directions parking things like that so a unique page for that particular location and that is what your G GMB listing, uh, because that is uh, obviously an individual location is the requirement for a GMB listing. And that would then link to that particular location page. Uh, you wouldn't have duplicate citations because although the name might be the same, because it's a group like ABC footwear, the name might be the same, but the address will be completely different. The um, phone number will be completely different because it's for that particular location, that shop. And um, the URL is different because the URL points to that particular uh, location page. So I don't know where you're talking about these, you know, duplicates and citations. They would be literally all completely different and there would be no duplicate citations so that's where i also then added in the question because i think maybe when he was talking about duplicates i was thinking ah i'm actually only one business but i want service areas so then i went to explain well service areas you aren't eligible for a gmb you only have got one gmb uh because you're only one business in your website you can have service area pages although you need to be a little bit more careful in creating hundreds of these. You need to provide some form of value. You can't just copy and paste each one and just change the area's name. Although in some locations, if they've relatively no competition, then they still, this kind of crap still works. Um, but obviously if you're in a competitive area, you need to add some value to your service pages. And again, you know, have that in your navigation uh, because you know, if you do them really well, they add value. Uh, to, to your customers. Um, but you can only have one GMB page if it's only one business. Uh, you can therefore um, add um, service areas into your GMB listing. You can stipulate those. But 
you won't have duplicate citations either because you will only be building citations for one uh, business in this case and in this instance. So yeah, I hope I kind of clarified the, the, the differences there for him. Thank you, uh, Tim. Yeah, uh, it's great that you guys uh, can find the time uh, to, to uh, answer these questions through the week. I also uh, recognize Michael Martinez uh, puts in a supreme effort um, in answering questions as soon as they're asked. All right, let's um, move on to the next number four of 12 in total from Tara Robertson. Um, it's titled Google is not recognizing my domain name. Tara said, I'm working on a website and even if you type the domain name in, you can't seem to get it to display. Does anyone know why this might be happening? Uh, do I need to submit to Google or something? Uh, I just point out um, in the comments there, you'll see uh, Michael Martin has uh, picked up that uh, she had no follow, no index across every page on the site. Um, and that cured it. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Also, this huge robots text file. Uh, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why people block robots. Uh, um, but, you know, I, I really don't. I don't understand it. Um, comments? Okay, let's move on to the next. Number five on our run list from JL Favario. Um, he said, what's your input about copying a manufacturer's um, boilerplate, if you like, yeah, verbatim or with minimal ed ed edits and placing it on your e-commerce product page? So look, uh, hundreds and millions of you know whether they're affiliate sites, whether they uh, you know supplier sites, whether they you know pretty much everyone does it. The difficulty is is when everybody does it, <laughs> then how does Google kind of determine well which which sites watch do I show when somebody searches for a um, an Amani black XYZ watch, which one do I display? And that tends to then boil down to, um, you know, the actual sites authority. So you'll start getting shit like Amazon and eBay showing up. Um, then you'll actually get the prop, the brand for it. And then you'll start getting other more, you know, highly linked to more popular sites. Um, so the answer is, there's nothing wrong with it but you want to try and add value to it to try and break through that clutter. And I've had, you know, you know, an e-commerce sites, new people coming into the market. And how can we make it slightly, you know, get it, actually start getting ourselves onto the first page and start, you know, you know, making a matter and that is adding a bit of value to it. So yeah. Um, and that is, you know, if you're selling the product, you should, you know, the, the the supplier or whoever should still have some kind of input into that. You know, why are they selling it? Is it a great brand? Um, you know, uh, tell me about this leather strap. Give me a bit more info. Um, what other products would a complement in the site? Uh, and why? Why do you feel that? Um, also, images. Can you, do you have a... Um, a small light box in the in, in in the business somewhere that you can actually take better images of that product. Uh, you probably don't have the product, you know, you might just be drop shipping, you know, I don't know. But can you take a better image than the bulk standard one that everyone's used that Google may actually display for that shopping query? Because They've got everybody else's. Can you display it slightly better, slightly better quality, um, slightly different angles? You could even brand it. And that is a unique opportunity just to have your image because Google has got 
the same flipping image and they can understand it on, uh, on a base you know ai level that that is literally the same but if your watch is at a slightly different angle slightly to you know slightly different better quality um you know you've got a good opportunity to get your image in there before you even hit page one your image is on page one um that and that's a little trick we've used to to actually get people in um to actually start clicking through they like see there's something that's totally different uh all the shopping is exactly the same image all the shopping down the side the same image and in the image carousel there's one that stands out and because it's slightly different you've got your little logo or your branding in it boom you know yeah look i'm not saying it's the same as actually being positioned on <laughs> on page one but you start getting visits um so how can you you know i'm just thinking that you try and think if you can you you know add value and of course adding value doesn't necessarily need to be like uh, actually written words on that page you could have a particular set um of you know whatever the site is particularly selling um you could actually start creating youtube vids um i don't know it's is this thing that needs putting up could you create a video that needs to I don't know, maybe it's a desk you're selling, for example. Um, could you do a quick video on how to 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 put it up um, and actually have that on the page? So you're adding value, something slightly different. People are then coming, you know, obviously it's a standalone. You probably have it on YouTube also on the on there, um, which in itself would people would be following through. But you know, can you add value in that way? Or if it's a watch strap, how do you, how do you change the watch strap? You know, have a nice, uh, a well done video on how to change that, depending on what the product is. So think about it, not necessarily have to be in words, but uh, it could be also a video that complements it. But I'm just saying to stand out from the crowd, try and add some kind of value to that particular um, product. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to the next. This one from Lucas Wortman. He said, hi there, I have a really big issue with my SEO. I own a company called Air Hosted in Switzerland. For some reason, when anyone, whenever someone just Googles for the company name, results for Air Hostess show up instead of us. It says on top of this message, uh, uh, showing results for uh, Air Hostess, search instead for Air Hostead. If I click on the below, search instead for Air Hostead, it finds my company directly. It is really strange as we perform really well for other search terms such as Airbnb management service, etc. Would be really glad if someone can point me to a direction on how to fix it. <coughs> well, <clears throat> it's not really a question on how to. F oh well, okay, yeah, you can fix it. But what this is is basically Google's understanding. You know, they are more uh, more people have you know searched for air hostess than air hosted, and until Google becomes um able to equate when somebody searches air hosted that they're not misspelling air hostess and that there is actually a business called air hosted and that is what they want to see right i've you know um i'm called online ownership literally anything and i like you know when i first launched you know 10 12 years ago uh, i i couldn't even uh, first page for my for my business name um purely because it was it's very generic and literally you know it, there's so many things from cars you know ownership changing ownership details online for cars like literally anything so it, and you know. so one you could just as you build your brand this would slowly change as be more and more people uh, understand your brand and actually search for your brand name then google will understand that there is something called air hosted and I, I don't need to ask. I understand there is, and I will show you that. Um, another way you can start slowly, slightly speeding the, that process up is you could do something like literally 
create a social media profile on every freaking platform going. Okay. And there's about 70. So you could create a branded one for yourselves, linking back to your side uh, on every single social platform. Um, that's a quick way to build up your kind of understanding branding. What's the name? What's the URL? Um, if this place has actually got a corporate office, you could, you know, but I think you're more online, but yeah, you could add the address into that, you know, and your, your same and, and the byline, what you do. Uh, that's a quite a good way of building up a very quick branded profile online very quickly. Um, yeah, but this is literally going to take time for Google to understand the difference. But you know that that, that, that is that, that's quite a good way. I mean, if you want a super duper, go for it. Um, I don't know anything about the company, but if you've potentially got the write ups and the citations and the kind of things like that, you could potentially um, you know get yourself a Wikipedia listing. But you know, there's certain criteria for getting yourself listed, or you may or may not have them. Um, and yet, uh, someone like George mentioned press releases. Yeah, bang a few out there, man. You know, branded, 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 branded. That's what you got to do. So it's, it's you know, it's a, it's about getting Google to understand that you actually there is a word, and this is the business I'm going to show when somebody searches for it. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? I think this was um, also well covered on the uh, uh, Dan Messio questions Facebook group. Um, we're going to call that answered and move on. This one from JLo. Can I set up only UTM underscore source? I remember that I read somewhere where it says that uh, when setting up UTM tracking, UTM source, UTM campaign, UTM name are all required fields. Um, but if I only want to track source, for example, if I want to track traffic from Google My Business, can I just put uh, UTM source equals GMB? Would it still work? Yeah. Um, that will yeah. still work. The only thing is you will get in your referral thing it will say if you've put GMB, it'll put GMB and then it will do a, still do a forward slash, but it'll say not set. Um, so, yeah, but you will still clearly be able to see it's GMB in your referrals in your analytics, but half of it will still say not set. Excellent, Tim. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on to one from Lauren Baker. Um, it's titled Shopify SEO. He wants to know if there are any recommended guides on Shopify SEO. He said, I've done my share, but looking to learn more. I reckon the best book for Shopify SEO would be a, a, a white, a, a 500 white pages blank, and on the last page, do not use Shopify. No? About that. Uh, it's a long time since I've SEO'd a, um, a, a, a Shopify site. But out of uh, all of these kind of things, um, uh, these kind of SaaS type uh, solutions, um, I was able to do some quite good things with Shopify. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't touched one in years, but apparently they're doing some, yeah, apparently they've kind of got themselves sorted over the last few years. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I haven't, haven't uh, worked on one in a long time, but apparently they've, they're doing all right. Yeah, I, 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 I was pleasantly surprised. Um, it wasn't... Uh, uh, wasn't, there, there wasn't everything I wanted to do, but there was uh, a lot of good things there. So um, it's not answering the question, but um, I think Shopify is uh, is a good thing. Um, whether I would go for it uh, over WooCommerce from a, an SEO point of view, I don't know. 
Um, I'm uh, up to my eyeballs in Wo WooCommerce sites at the moment. Um, and uh, um, yes, sometimes feeling that like I'm pulling my hair out. But anyway, um, there's. <coughs> Pulling your hair out, try Magento, mate. Oh, yeah, my coat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The yes, dude is not so bad. No. Yeah, it, what I was going to say is it all depends on the developer who originally, because there are so many things which can be enabled, can't be enabled, can be, you know, different rules. You just need someone that really understands the platform to create it and make it easy for your long-term growth and you know you're using yeah your your use use of it when you mention long-term growth tim i mean has anybody ever stumbled across a woocommerce or shopify site that was doing serious money i would have to research that Hmm. I'm sure they are. Well, you'd think so, but then again, um, I've never seen one. Um, and and um, I host and an, an, a number of WooCommerce and um, Shopify sites. Anyway, let's move on. Sorry for having an opinion. <laughs> It's okay, I have an opposite opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Abinda, um, Abinda Raj, um, oh, we've got a, a new member of um, our, our Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group, um, David Kindred. Thank you. Welcome, David. Um, and um, I think yeah, that brings us up to about 5,070 or some, something of that order. Anyway, Abindra said, uh, is it a good good idea to use Google Tag Manager for structured data? Thanks in advance. Um, I'm not going to be able to give a, um, a, a straight answer to this, but um, I was aware that you could do this, and I looked into it, um, and I'm afraid that my brain cell went ping, um, and I decided not to go about it in that way. Um, the documentation I found was uh, a little impenetrable for my uh, my brain at that time of the day. Um, so I think the, my answer is, why would you want to use Google Tag Manager um, and have you got the, uh, the technical understanding to, uh, to, to, to make it work for you? Um, I just paste the uh, the, uh, the the JSON LD into the page, um, and and that's about it. Um, I know that's that's a, gives you a, a fixed um, uh, a fixed piece of structured data for the uh, for the page, but uh, so maybe that's too simplistic. But um, yeah, so, so um, do it. I was at. Oh, what was his bloody name? I was at a search conference in January, and I think it was Kevin Eines, Kevin's Index, Kevin something or other. Ah, uh, can't quite remember his name. Kevin Index. So I think think so. Um. And his particular talk was on um, using, so it was structured data, uh, GTM first, and then also using um, uh, JavaScript. <laughs> so first was, you know, a, a massive thing on what, which, which, you know, on a large site, which, you know, and obviously this was because it was a massive, massive site. Uh, and they had kind of limited um, access to it, but also they wanted to experiment on what could they add on on page, large scale, in the shortest possible time frame. Google Tag Manager worked on page, but a lot of the time it would never uh, picked up 
um, or fired on the page um, in the sense that, and I can't remember the whole thing, but that was the weaker of the two, either using Google Tag Manager uh, versus um, JavaScript. That was better, but ultimately, you know, it's better if you have, you know, proper control and, 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 and add it, um, you know, properly to the site. But um, so I'm, I, I don't really know. I don't have the experience, but I've had the talk and apparently Google Tag, Tag Manager was the worst out of the lot for actually implementing it. That's part I do remember. So if you don't have to, if you can do it in other ways, from what I understand, that is a better way. Okay, thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, move along. We're nearly through here. We've got uh, another question from Jane Peters. Um, the question that she has asked is, uh, she said, I've been posting marketing reports for many years using the keyword for the area, followed by the month or year of the report, would this be considered duplicate content? Uh, for example, XXXX uh, real estate marketing report, September 2018, et cetera, et cetera. If so, what to do about that? Thanks. Um, offhand? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's going to depend on the amount of work and research you're putting into this um, and what's, what's the differentiated content is <coughs> among your past, uh, you know, just past data reports. Um, it definitely could be if it's, it's pretty automated and there's not really a large difference. Um, but if you've been doing a pretty good, like a, you know, decent job of highlighting differences, let's just say in, in a very specific real estate market, shouldn't be an issue. I guess it, it might depend on how much, uh, how standardized these reports are, if they're, you know, two or three pages of, of basically a table um, with some, some numbers changing. It really depends on what percentage of the, the, the report is changing or whether you know there's a, a nice chunk chunk of commentary in it to say what's happening in real, real estate uh, in that area or that kind of real estate um you know that it depends um and the, the famous it depends yeah it is the famous. yeah so i added a little bit in there i thought Right, you know, if you've been doing this for years, years apparently, you've got a massive bit of data there. Um, why don't you actually make like uh, its own sectional resource on site? I'm assuming that's a state agents or real estate agents, as you call it, but have a market market report section on there, um, and actually properly group these. You could group them obviously by months. I don't know if they're specifically by different areas within that state or I don't know what they are, but, you know, could you add them by group, by by um, the areas? Um, I don't know what's in them. You know, is there value ranges? Could you add them and, you know, really make a real go-to res uh, resource there? And then going back to what da um, David and Micah said was, you know, month on month, these might not change in terms of the numbers very perceptively but now as you if you've been doing this for a long time you could actually do quarterly right so you do your monthly but then you could do your quarterly and your quarterly would significantly differ because then you would have you know the, the, the three months worth of difference and they could differ or you may do a yearly roundup or or a half yearly roundup where the actual numbers are completely different and the report would be totally different. But the whole idea that I was saying to you is you've got all of this. Why don't you make it a go-to resource for that area in real estate? So 
you know, if people are either entering the market, people looking to buy in the market, people really, actually, you could make, you take all of that and turn it into some seriously good little resource which would attract people from all over, you know, wanting to, are they, if they, are they investors, first time buyers, just moving to the area, moving out of the area, other real estate brokers wanting to get an understanding. You could, that's what, I, you know, it's a thought. It's a thought. If you've got the stuff, think about how better to utilize it. Yeah, that's good, Tim. All right, uh, let's go to the next. Usman Ghani asked the question titled Thin Content. Usman said, Dears, I need your guidance. Uh, I have a WordPress themes theme. Rela I have a WordPress themes related website. I want to write a maximum of 500 words for each theme. So each page will have 500 words. And I'm confused uh, that uh, it may be considered as thin content. Please advise. Well, I, I'd say um, that um, since when was 500 words uh, thin content? Um, No, I, I would. I wouldn't say it's thin content. It might not be adequate content. It depends what you're up against. Uh, if the other guys have got <clears throat> a thousand or fifteen hundred really good words, then your five hundred words aren't going to go very far. <clears throat> yeah, it all depends on what this is relating to. You know, if this is about open heart surgery, five hundred words ain't going to cut it. But if this this is satisfying the query, like. I have an itchy ass. Well, 500 words should about cut the job. You know what I mean? It all depends on what it's about. Okay. All right. Um, and um, I'm, I'm still getting over the shock of that frank admission, Tim. Um, <laughs> All right, then. let's go to number 12. Uh, Gurav Nail has another question for us uh, on bot bounce rate versus real user bounce rate. Uh, Gurav said, uh, does Google uh, take bot bounce rate seriously um, like the real user bounce rate? I'm not sure what this means with bot bounce rate because, um, yeah, I, uh, I mean, I don't know what, what, yeah, honestly, I don't know what that, what that implies. David Cooch has said uh, um, one of his responses was, uh, is Google smarter or dumber than this? I, I vote for dumber. Um. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm in with Mike here. I, I'm. I'm a bit confused about this concept of uh, bot bounce rates. Um, uh, yes, I understand user bounce rate, even bounce rate. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm not sure about this. I see Michael Martin has said, uh, actually, I don't know how he can unequivocally say this. I don't know how you can do this, Michael, but anyway, I'll, I'll take your word for it because you're such a, a good source. But Michael said yes and no. Yes, they take bot bounce as seriously as user bounce. No, they do not take bounce rate into consideration for rankings. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, I think it's that time again, guys. Yes, it is. We've answered all of the questions on the um, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group and the SEO Questions community on Google Plus for another week or so. Um, 
We'll be back at the same time next week um, to do uh, this uh, all again. Uh, in the meantime, I must thank David Roseanne, Micah Fisher Kirshner, and Tim Kapper for fronting up and uh, answering uh, the, the questions asked. We uh, thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm sure everybody else is too. Well, anyway, we'll be back at the same time. And also we thank uh, you for watching us because uh, your interest in what we do makes what we do worthwhile. Anyway, same time next week. Goodbye and good night.